right, everyone. Welcome to the first day of the HDYO Congress, second year in a row that I will be hosting track one along with Haley. So today for, the, for our first session, we have a Grammy Award winning musician, Trey Gray, who's played before with Jewel, Faith Hill, and now plays with, uh, who do you play with now, Trey? Um, Brooks and Dunn. Brooks, Brooks and Dunn, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was right. just nominated, not, I didn't get the award, so. Well, to, to us, you did. Not a nomination is good enough. Yeah, well, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed yeah. to be that kind of, but I didn't, I didn't win, but that's, thank okay. you for saying that. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so take away, Trey. You're going to be talking to us today about your family history with HD and your experiences. Okay, uh, well, thank you. Thanks, Mustafa. Um, thanks for having me, everybody out there. Um, I also know Mustafa, it's open for questions as well, right? So... Or people, to, what are they typing or something? And then, yeah, absolutely. So there's chat functions and the QA function that people can use to type in their questions. But I'll, I'll as they come across, I can feed those to you as well. Oh, that'd be great. Okay, great. Okay. So, um, I guess a little bit about me. I'm, um, I was born, um, in, in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, um, and grew up there until I was about 10. And then I moved a little north of Indiana, uh, a place called South Bend, where I went to high school and then, um, um, then, I, then I spent the, uh, from 1989 till 2014 in Nashville, Tennessee. I moved down to try to become, I wanted to be a rock star. I mean, let's be honest, right? What do we all go to a music city for? That's why you're in Toronto, right, Mustafa? You would like to be a rock star. That's what I hear. So uh, <laughs> your solo record's coming out, right, next spring. Um, but no, but then um, if I look back now through the history of this with, uh, with the Huntington's, um, it was my grandmother, my mom's mom. Um, she was very uh, jerky and she was very, she had a weird anxiety going on about it, which now that, you know, if I can look at somebody, I know actually what's going on. And also my mom, my mom, um, who I got the gene from, um, or got the, um, you know, the, the, yeah, from, um, she, was, she was exactly like my grandmother in the sense of she had lots of anxiety. She also had um, epilepsy. So she never drove a car in her whole life. So my parents were divorced when I was five. So we had to live on a, um, a, uh, a bus line. So my mom could, she worked in downtown Indianapolis. She was a, a great legal secretary. Her, uh, she was brilliant. She loved to read books. Um, I mean, she worked up until like three years, be uh, four years, four years before she died. Um, 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 she was still working downtown Indianapolis. The only reason why they couldn't have her work there anymore is because she was falling over and it was a big law office and they couldn't have that obviously. So, but her mind was sharp as attack. Her body was just, you know, failing. In 2000, um, 2002, I got a call from my mom. I was in Germany, uh, with Jewel and, uh, you know, saying, you know, you need to call me as soon as you get home um we need to talk so she she went and got tested for Huntington's disease because actually her younger brother my uncle Pat who was an ex um military guy who was Air Force Special Forces he was also like uh like my grandma and like my mom he was very kind of you know angsty and kind of nervous and kind of just you know um and his he went to his um What's it called when you go, what do they have? The medical places? What's it called? The, uh, the, VA the VA hospital, which sometimes people give those a bad rap in America. I don't know how it is elsewhere, but his, his uh, doctor goes, I think you have something called Huntington's disease. And we were, you know, he was like, what? So he went right over to Vanderbilt in Nashville, which is like an hour away from him. And they're like, yeah, we think you have this Huntington's disease. They gave him, you know, the testing. My mom did the exact same thing. So they called me and, I, and for whatever reason, I think um, for those of us, with this and knowing about this when you have any kind of ailment i think you know i think you feel your body you, does that make any sense um um and i knew something was going on with my body i knew that i've been traveling a lot around the world and i've been really super tired but there are some other things that were kind of clicking but um so i went at the time in december of, of uh uh or um in january of 2003 i went to vanderbilt myself anonymously at that time because I play drums for a living. And if somebody tells you, you know, what are the chances of you losing your, you know, 
you're, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to tell your bosses I'm playing to 20,000 people a night. Um, it was kind of heavy, right? So I went, had the testing done. Um, you know, they tell you two weeks later, you have to come in. And it was, you know, my, uh, my, my general doctor, the, um, the neurologist, and then the uh, psychiatrist were there, you know, to tell you, you know, hey, yes, you know, blah, 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 you indeed, blah, blah, boom. And they give you the whole 10 to 15 year thing. So, you know, of course, it was a little alarming. And for a couple of years, I didn't, I didn't even talk about it. You know, I didn't, only told um, my family knew, of course, but um, I didn't tell very many people just because I was too scared, you know. And then in, um, I was in Australia with Brooks and Dunn um, in Melbourne. They have this amazing um, Huntington's home, which is like, it was, it was almost like a Ronald McDonald house type thing, you know, but they had three little cottage, like three little houses on the property. And it was the different stages of Huntington's. And, and um, I wanted to see the house. I wanted, I wanted, I mean, I wanted to see these people. And I felt the, the love that I felt from these people was unbelievable. You know, it was, uh, you know, it, it was so overwhelming how positive and how, how big their hearts were. Right. So at that moment, I went back to my hotel room and I, and I called um, my then wife and I said, I got, you know, I got to come out of the closet with this and there's, there's gotta be something we can do, you know, to make a difference. So we decided to set up my foundation through Vanderbilt. Um, and there you go. That's been kind of, you know, what I've been doing since then. My mom, my, my uncle passed, he was in 2002, he got diagnosed in 2007, he passed. So his was really, really quickly. My mom lasted until 2014. And it's been, you know, since I got diagnosed in 03. So it's, 2022 so I'm you know and you know it's funny that all my doctors and neurologists and everything they think because I've been playing drums since I was five right I'm using so many different parts of my body that I'm just keeping that going it's, it's like with Alzheimer's patients or Parkinson's patients if these people can just even walk to the mailbox every day and come back I don't think they realize how much that that helps them you know I know it's super hard um uh, but I definitely think it's been a blessing in my life, not a curse, getting to know people. Um, I love people and I, I just, you know, it's, it's, it's been great. I, it's, it's, it sucks. It sucks really bad, but there is hope. There is, um, it's not, you know, you just get up every day, you, you say your prayers and you, you know, you keep going, you know, you just keep, you don't stop. That's a little bit about where I'm at now. I'm still touring. Um, I've had to slow down just a little bit. I turned 53 in December. Um, you know, it, I'm tired, tired, tired. Um, I'm foggy, super foggy. That's why I drink Guinness in the mornings. That was a joke for all you people in Europe. Um, all you three people and for Karim, Kareem, Kareem. but, um, no, I, I feel very blessed, you know, and I feel, you know, I think there's power in prayer. I think there's also power in, um, hugging, touching, you know, um, um, we are dealing with something and, you know, I just think we need to be a community and do that together. Thankful for today. Yeah. Thankful. Yeah. Yeah. So how about that? See, that lasted, I told her I'd only be like, I, like my story was like only three minutes and it's like 10 after that's it. See, so did we open it up to anything, any questions, anything? There's a couple of questions, but great job. Oh. Thank you for great. sharing our sto your story. So one of the questions we have so far is how do you keep your positivity up during these tough, tough times? God, faith, um, if, you know, you just got, I mean, come on, it's, a, he's, it's beautiful, whatever, whatever you're got, whatever that is for you, um, whatever makes the world go around for you, um, if you're a Christian, if you're whatever, Muslim, I don't care what you are, you're, whatever your faith is, that's a heavy, heavy thing, you know, us just being able to wake up every day, it, to me is just, and I don't think that, I, I people may say, that that's be that I'm BS or whatever. No, I, that's really how I live. You know, I don't, I don't worry about anything at all. I give it all to him. Um, and, and people say that's crazy too, but it, it's the God's honest truth. And, um, I know, I know, I, I just know that everything's going to be okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's wait for a couple more questions oh. to come in, but what have you been up to these days? Like, what are you, are you creating music or? Yes, every day. So when I'm home, my base, my home base, I, um, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm the, um, I'm the artist in residency at a private Christian school. Mm -hmm. So I'm their K through eight 
general math, I mean, general music teacher. And then I, um, I do the choir and their band programs. So, and then I have two studios, you know, I have a project, little project studio, then I have a commercial studio and we just produce new bands and just do stuff like that. So it's incredibly fun. It's a great time and stuff. I have my foundation and just, we, we go, we go and talk to people and just, you know, bring awareness, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Sounds very fulfilling. It's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially the kids, man. Yeah. When you're, if, if, if you ever think about having a bad day, when you walk into a bunch of kindergartners, cause we always teach them Beatles songs singing, you know, here comes the sun. It's, um, it'll, yeah. it'll, that's for the rest of the year. You're fine. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, there's a couple of questions in the chat. One person asks, what is, uh, what helps you recover strength when you feel tired? Like what are your strategies for dealing with your disease? Uh, when I'm tired, I'm a huge proponent of naps. I'm a napper. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, you know, um, I remember my doctors telling me, um, you know, it's, it's a fuel gauge, right? It, which, which is sports people and whatever your energy people just in everyday life, you know, your energy, it's how you eat, you know, um, I'm, 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 I'm not as much of a, as I should be. I'm not as much of a, uh, good eater I, you know I, I do i'll drink a little bit i don't take any drugs um i'll do occasional um um edibles and stuff instead mm -hmm. of like if, just because it for my anxiety so i stopped taking my um clonazepam like i don't know maybe maybe seven or eight years ago um i still take a my zoloft um and i just upped that i, I was taking such a low like a baby dose basically and for years they wanted me to go a little bit higher so but other than that, I take just multivitamins, but I nap. I love naps. I can nap for 10 minutes and it makes me feel great for like two hours, you know? Um, so right? Even sitting up. I mean, I'm so used yep. to taking naps in airplanes and stuff. So yep. especially, you know, even a five minute nap, but power naps for me are everything. That's what keeps me going. How yep. is routine? Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, bro. And routine for me. I got to have a routine now. Um, if not, I, I'm in total dis. I'm in total just dysfunction. You know, just total. Am I in? And I don't have any concept of time. You know, um, which is I know bizarre. And it really took a few years when I moved back home. When my my, my mom died and my dad died, um, they didn't believe me. You know, when I said to them, you know, you have to you have to text me five times. You know, that day because if not, I just don't. I think it's been like five minutes. I don't have a concept of what's going on. You know, they thought I was you know, being a jerk or whatever. And no, I just don't have a concept, you know. Something. That's true. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. I'm I'm sure you're you. <laughs> yeah. As they Sorry. feed me, as they feed me beer. Yeah. Guinness <laughs> in the morning as well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's another question that asks, what's the experience been like for your family? What's your support structure like? Oh, amazing. Um, I mean, I, I think that I have one total... I'm from a broken home, meaning um, parents divorced, but we, but I have one full blood sister that was, that was at risk. Right. And she was negative and she has four kids. So I was very, it's actually her 55th birthday today. We're having a party in just a little bit, but um, I think she holds some guilt for that. And in the sense of, because she, because I play drums for a living, you know, I'm a musician for a living. And um, I think she, that burden weighs heavily on her heart, you know, um, which I don't at all. I'm so, I'm glad, you know, you know, if you, if you're, if you're out there and, and, and you have a sibling and they test negative, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. You know, I don't, I don't know how to, um, other than that, um, I think I, 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 I'm not one to, uh, I don't know how to say this. I don't, I, if this sounds arrogant, it's not what I mean at all, but I'm not one, I don't pray for myself ever like that. I pray for other people. And mm -hmm. um, I don't like to talk about that. I don't like to, you know, I don't like to reach out to my family and say I'm having a bad day. If I'm having a bad day, I think they just know it. And yeah. it's odd, you know, I think it's the big guy again that, you know, all of a sudden my, the calls will come in or the texts will come in. So mm -hmm. I always feel some sort of comfort uh, in that. So my family has been amazing. And, and I, I have made, since I've been back home, it's, I just made a million not a million, but a handful of friends that are just like brothers, sisters to me, you know? So it's been amazing. Yeah. yeah. And the HD community is amazing. I mean, yeah. all around the world. I mean, it's just incredible, you know? 
Yeah, absolutely. There's a few people wishing happy birthday to your sister in the chat as well. Really? Oh, I'll tell her that because that's a podcast and I never said hi. Yeah, tell Jared. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers to that. All right. Let's see if we have other questions. So I have a question. You know about Woody Guthrie, right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So what, what do you think about the parallels between his situation and your situation, where you're both musicians? How do you think uh, does Woody Guthrie have, has Woody Guthrie had an impact on you in the way you live your life? Because he does with HD as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, um, when all that came out, um, there's a good, uh, um, Ben Weber, he's an actor, and his wife, Liz Weber, was married to the guitar player in Pearl Jam. Yeah. When they found out, yeah, they found out they were doing that HD thing at, at the Beacon Theater in New York City, and they reached out to me, you know, to see if I wanted to come, you know, play with them. And I did, and I dealt more, dealt, delved, delved, yeah, yeah, delved more into that. Yeah, I, yes. I, 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 once again, I think, I think when you're when any type of musical thing or artsy kind of thing, the similarities are so with your with our brains you know with our brains it's, it's like that movie uh the awakenings with robert Will, uh, robin williams and uh robert De Niro. yeah to where um oh my gosh it's like okay it's like tony bennett right with um alzheimer's right mm -hmm. does he have alzheimer's where he can't remember any remember that he can't remember anything this is like two months ago and he's playing with lady gaga and they start playing the song and he's like he's right you yeah. know you're we're here we're here right it's, mm -hmm. it's all this other stuff that's not here for us does that make any sense yeah so I totally. think, makes sense. yeah you know right did you see what that with, with your mom no um, no i didn't see. my mom was pretty like when i was by the time i was 18 she was pretty far gone um so. So, yeah um but let's move on to other questions i think there's a few in the q a uh one question asks what has been the best start of starting uh your not-for-profit so what's the oh. most fulfilling part? That's a tough uh, question. Yeah, it's a great question, but I have a great answer. I hope, I hope, I hope, yeah. I, hope I hope. And this is going to sound area too, but I hope it doesn't mean. So, you know, last year after um, COVID, it, all my tours and stuff got canceled, right? Two years ago, like everybody did, having a hard time, you know. So start, start, things started opening up. So uh, um, um, I didn't want to get, I didn't want to get the uh, the jab because of, you know, I just didn't know my, you know, so I call my neurologist at Vanderbilt, a great guy. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so he's so funny. So first off he goes, look, it's my team who came up with Moderna. You know, this is, so we've been, this has been in development a lot of years. This is gonna, you know what I mean? It's gonna help so many things. Like you don't have no, you have no idea what's gonna, you know, you know, have a time. I mean, there's so many things that this thing's gonna, it's, and it's been in the pipeline, blah, blah. So that made me feel a lot better, right? So then he goes, but I don't want you to get Moderna. Which I, because he knows, but he goes, because you're such a wimp. So <laughs> I know how you feel. And there may be just a few side effects. Because, you know, I am, I'm, I'm a wimp, I'm a wimp. So he goes, get Pfizer. I said, that's great. And he goes, you have to know something, you know. We see, what was the number? We, we see like 250 families, right? Yeah. It's like 65 of those families, we have paid for, for their care. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, it makes it, I mean, I tear, tear up right now, you know. I mean, that's, yeah. I just want to help one person, you know that's if I get up one person a day you know just to even make them feel like there's hope there's hope man so that's to me is that does that sound arrogant no, but, and no, that's not, not me it's just coming from people who have been very generous you know and 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 I think we we when we started this you know it's always been about I didn't you're in Toronto and it's different there as well okay Americans are very much, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's take a pill and let's fix this problem. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sure around the world, you all know that I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Okay. In Australia, this is what really blew my mind. When I went to that Huntington's home, you know, they were all about the end of their, the quality of their life at the end of their life. What would make them feel better? And I said, well, so you, they're on tons of supplements and they're doing all this. And they're like, no, uh -uh. if they wanted the room painted in stripes, we paint the room in stripes. If they wanted Kiss playing 24 seven in their room, they're playing, you know, it was, they valued, they, everybody had dignity. And that was huge to me. And when I, that's what we want, you know, they're, they're just, we want, of course we want research. We don't, we want this to go away, absolutely. But the people who are at the last or whatever, they should be able to die with some dignity. 
and not worry Absolutely. about anything else. Yeah, do, don't, I don't definitely mean? agree with that. Yeah, thank you for helping those patients, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh my, yeah. my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a question from Jen, and she asks, are there efforts in the US to make an HD home? Like something that you're involved with personally? That's, that's yeah, we all just, <laughs> yeah. stop. that's our huge, that's what we want. And yeah. I'll tell you this, there's a great place, Citroen, in up Sarah. in, yeah, up, upstate New York. Look it up, S-I-T-R-I-N. I always get it wrong. I always want to say E-N. So they have this great place in the, in the Catskill Mountains in New York, which is perfect. They do Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and they have, uh, they have only one floor right now. But that's the whole location of that and the whole just, oh, man, that's – and then to have not only that, but that, you know, every – you know, every section of America would be great. You know, the thing is, the thing is, you know, I, I, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's so, it's not such a, it's not a hip disease. It's not, it's not which a is well known. Right. Disease. It's not well known, <laughs> but it, really not, yeah. it everything in yeah. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS. Yeah. You know, I contacted the Michael J. Fox Foundation uh, when we first started this years ago, right? After, after Australia, I came home. The lady there, super super nice and she goes uh you know we're so busy you know you don't understand you know even with him being such a big name michael j fox right and so many people have this you would not you know the just the whole it, but it, it was very interesting we're just yeah it's hard it's hard it's really really super hard until people realize it and see it they just can't you know there's no you know you know i'm sure you know right yeah just, absolutely we're just not for sure it's yeah. it's tough to deal with. It's very it's a very devastating disease, I would say. Yeah. Um, so there's a question from Charlotte who asks, you spoke of family that you've lost. How do you deal with your grief? What's your process? God, my faith. It all comes down to faith. I know it's I know it seems so I promise, I, and I, I don't mean that like I don't take that lightly whatsoever. Um, if you don't have faith and if you can't find it, talk to somebody. Just talk to somebody, um, reach out. Um, there's tons of groups, there's tons of support groups. If not locally, thank goodness for the internet. You know, um, don't be scared. Nobody's gonna make fun of you. Nobody's ever gonna think anything bad of you. Um, just do it, reach out to us. We, we will talk to you, we don't care, you know? Um, we go, when, we, when I, when I I'm, I'm a huge hugger, right? Huge, huge, huge hugger. And so during COVID, it was really hard because and, and um because I look I, I hug strangers and I just hug them because I they look I you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um so I go to a talk and a guy goes, and pardon, pardon my French, I hope I can say this word. Shit. He goes, I think you're full of shit. <laughs> and it was okay. like, you know, it was like he was like 200 people in a ballroom, right? And he was mm -hmm. in the middle. That was like his, he stood up and goes, I just like you're and I go, okay, well, I can't and I hugged him. You know, I'm like, dude, doesn't this feel good? I'm not, you know, doesn't it's really important human touch is important you know my brother my, my brother my brother i'm believing steps but you know he said you know a buddy of his um uh, who's passing away um his wife was there holding his hand and it's in and, and we it was over the terms of like it's so sad that people don't hold hands anymore how mm -hmm. simple a thing of a couple holding hands how what that does to your everything your mood yeah. your energy your physical, I mean, everything, you know, it's just, it's incredible. And I think it's okay. Yeah, to for sure. Grief equals love. Yes, my boy here, it's okay to experience grief because grief equals love. So, yeah, look at you. absolutely. Those are some wise words. Yeah, there's oh, a comment 80, in the chat that's 80 years old. I'm 80. 80. Yeah, I'm 80. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was my dad opened his book. Yeah, see? Yeah. See who I have around me? It's, that's yeah, why it's not me. It's people. That's important. Uh, there's a comment in the chat that says we need eight hugs every day minimum. Oh, oh, I love that. oh can you write that down? Yeah. Oh, can I ask them if we can steal that? Can we steal that? We need a shirt that says that. You know eight hugs minimum. That's a great. That's the name of our coffee. Oh, eight, eight hugs. hugs. Thank you. That'll be a new coffee. There you go. Well, whoever put that down. <laughs> yeah, who did that? Who did the eight hugs? Where was that? Uh, I think the name is in Russian. <laughs> so oh, I can't oh, pronounce oh, it God properly. bless you over there, man. That's yeah. yeah. And the, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh man. There's someone also virtually hugging you from the Canary Islands. Oh, I'll take oh, it. Thank you. That's so great. Hug you back. 
I'll get back. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're good to go. Last question. Um, have you found your musical process changing over oh. time? Yes. Yes. Your creative process and how you create music? Yeah. Um, I, I think, um, you know, when you're a kid and you see something and you want it to be a certain way, and then you, you get into it a little more, right? Um, and I always had this, I, w I wanted perfection, you know, or what to me was perfection, which to someone else is, you know, everybody's perfection or everybody's whatever is whatever. Now, I'm very, for like the last few years, especially, it's all about the moment, you know? If, um, and, and with the advent, if you're in music or any kind of arts or anything, with, you, with, with everybody knows, or, or photography, another example, now anything can be fixed immediately. You touch a button, it's fixed. A vocal, you know, you sing it off key, boom, you hit a button, it just goes boop, it's fixed, right? Mm -hmm. I don't do that. You know, we have a million tracks, no. We, we write it, now I, the people I work with, when I do something, we do it that day, we're done with it. We don't think about it. You know, and it's, that became very freeing to me, you know, as silly as that sounds, but because of that, I think my music has gotten better. And it's because of God too, you know, letting that speak through you rather than you trying to control that. If you let go of stuff, if you try, you know what I mean? If you give that control up, it's amazing how much more things will come to you. Does that, is that, and especially yeah. with music, that catalyst. Yeah, it must, for be, that. Yeah. must be very liberating. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. All right, great. Thank you for your time. Do you have any final oh, words for the UC community? Uh, final just, message you want to impart? Yes. If you need, if anybody needs anything, please, you know, find us. I know you can Google us and find us. And uh, if you please, uh, you know, just God bless you all. And thank, and thank you. And thank you. Just have a great day. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Drew. I'm pretty sure everyone in the chat is really appreciating you and you sharing your story here today. Okay, thanks, buddy. And hey, God bless you and your family. I wish I'll be you'll be in my prayers. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ray.